they will say, um, don't, members of the jury, don't jump to conclusions. Just because this happened and then this happened doesn't mean that, you know, event A happened, which was a gun firing, and event B happened, which is somebody dying. It's very hard to infer that that gun going off resulted in somebody dying. There is the well-known uh, idea of this problem of the smoking gun uh, in evidence, which illustrates the whole point about uh, inductive reason in relation to evidence. And the smoking gun thing goes like this, that um, you enter a room, and you see a man lying dead in a pool of blood. He's got a gunshot wound. Um, well, it's obviously a gunshot. I don't know how you know it's a gunshot wound, but you somehow know it's a gunshot wound. And standing not very far away from him is a man with a gun, and smoke is coming from the barrel of the gun. Um, there's no trick in this. The gun has been fired. So in the room, the gun has been fired, recently fired, and there's evidence that a gun has recently been fired. And nearby, there's a man lying with a gunshot wound, dead. Now, the inference, so, so now let's, let, let's do inductive reasoning on this. We've got our data. We've got a dead man, and we've got a gun. And we know that, uh, sorry, we've got a dead man by gunshot wounds, and we've got a gun. We know that the gun fires bullets from sense data and from perception, and we know that bullets can kill people. Therefore, we can use inductive reasoning, inductive logic, synthetic logic to add something new, some new knowledge, which is that gun killed that man. We've not seen that happening, but we've arrived at that truth statement, that knowledge about the world, through synthetic logic. Now, in this, you know, because it's not deductive, you cannot, from the fact that somebody's holding a gun, deduce that anybody's been killed. You can't do it. There's nothing in the nature of a gun smoking or otherwise that implies that that particular person we're talking about in hypothetical example um, has been killed. So we've got a leap to a conclusion. And in this case, famously, it's wrong because what's happened is the uh, the man has just discharged the gun into the air or something, um, and simultaneously, somebody passing by outside fired a gun and. It came through the window and killed the man that way. So, I mean, that's very unlikely. It's very unlikely. It is admittedly highly likely. And probably before a judge and jury, a jury would accept that it's beyond reasonable doubt if there's a smoking gun and a dead man. But it's not impossible that it happened in a different way. So this is the problem of induction. Inductive or synthetic truth is never totally true. It's always subject to doubt. Um, now, as it happens, there's a very good film you could watch about this called Twelve Angry Men, which is exactly about a jury arguing over uh, who killed who, and it, it, it's just a great film about how they make all these errors of induction. But there's a guy in there who knows logic, uh, and he knows his Hume, I think, and he, he, he talks them all through it and all the induction errors that they make. It's a great, great film, 12 Angry Men, uh, from the 50s. Superb. Go and watch it. Uh, another example um, of false induction that's, I think, quite funny is in uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is a good, popular, fun film about uh, the history of ideas and philosophy. Anyway, all the, all the sort of things we talk about in HCJ are, are kind of joked about in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, and the joke there is everybody knows that mice are kept in research labs and uh, they push a lever and they get a little pellet of food. Now, but who's causing who? Is pushing the lever causing uh, the, the pellet to happen, uh, the pellet of food to come, or um, 
are so, sorry are, so are the um, scientists controlling the mice or are the mice controlling the scientists it's by pushing that pellet are they causing the scientists to give them a little pellet of food or is it the other way around is it the scientists offering the pellet of food that is causing the mice to push push to leave them now obviously the common sense induction because it is induction is that the um the scientists are causing the mice to push to lever but in the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy it's the other way around that the whole of science and the whole of philosophy and everything has been created gigantic conspiracy by these mice so that whenever they push a lever and it, it forces these scientists who they who they've deluded in a kind of cartesian way into a kind of false consciousness uh, the scientists believe that they're controlling the mice but really the mice are controlling the scientists so that's uh, not exactly a belly aching laugh but uh, quite an amusing way of looking at this so the problem of false induction is very widespread for example according to sense perception the sun uh, goes across the sky and causes day to happen and when it sets it, it, this event of the sun setting appears to cause the night to happen these perceptions are gathered in our minds then we apply inductive logic and we draw the inference that the sun orbits around the earth and for millions of years that was believed to be true because it's a perfectly reasonable synthetic logical conclusion to draw from what you see about the movement of the sun um, for millennia it's accepted as scientific fact but it was merely a theory, a reasonable, inductive theory, synthetic logic, based, which was consistent with empirical data, but it was wrong. What's actually happening when, uh, day, when the day happened, what's causing that we now believe, we now believe, what's causing the day to happen is not the sun moving around the earth, but the earth moving on its axis. Now, we, again, we have not perceived that causality, that link between the rotation of the Earth and the passing of days and nights. It's only a theory, just the same as the old theory that um, the uh, sun orbited around the Earth. These are both theories. Why do we choose to go with the, the theory that the Earth is rotating? Why we do that is not because it's an eternal deductive certain truth it's only a synthetic um, truth but it's more consistent it's more consistent it explains more adequately the empirical data that we have and as soon as some different empirical data comes along um, then uh, then that we can abandon that uh, theory of uh, how we get days and nights and adopt the new one Another one is uh, thunder and lightning. Um, whenever thunder and lightning happens, you always get the light first. You get the lightning flash, and then at some point later, you get the thunderclap. Again, you, that's empirical data. It sends perception. You see the lightning, and then later you hear the thunder, and, you, and people have seen it many, many, many times. 